So the last time we were building our breadboard and we got our LED onto our breadboard and got it positioned next to our Arduino. Now we have to put a resistor on. Now a resistor allows us to control how much electricity goes into our LED. If we sent the full 5 volts into our LED, it would burn it out in the real life. In our virtual life, eh, it may or may not, depending upon how uh, forgiving our environment wants to be. But we're going to do this as if we were going to program it in the real world. So we have to find a resistor. Our resistor for our LED, again, has to be a specific size to make sure that it is going to work for our LED. For our purposes, the safe resistor to use is 330 ohms. So we are going to look for a resistor. Here it is. And once we click it, we can type in the resistance. And you see we have all these different units here. We want ohms, and I want a resistor of 330. So if you were going to put this into our component in the real, you'd have to make sure it had a 330 rating at least. The stronger the resistor, the dimmer the light will be. Also notice that the colors of our resistor changed once we changed some of those numbers. This is color coding lets us know how much resistance our resistor has. As we type in different numbers, the color coding changes. We want 330, so if you're looking for this in the real, this is the color code you should be looking for on your resistor. So it's important to make sure that we connect up the power to our LED in the correct way. There are two components of the LED, the anode and the cathode. The anode is the positive side and is the longer side of the LED. So when we send power, we want to be sending the power through the positive side or the anode. So this is where we're going to connect our resistor first, because we're going to send the power to the positive side or the anode. So let's go back to our diagram. And we can see in our LED it is labeled for us, this being the cathode or the negative part, and this being the anode or the positive part. So we want to connect our resistor to the anode. So we're going to pick it up and drag it, and we're going to connect it to the anode. Now notice the way I have it connected here. I have one end of it in the same channel as the anode of the LED and then the other end of it in another channel all by itself. So we're going to connect this to the positive side of our rail, which is marked by the plus. So I'm going to take a jumper and just connect one jumper to there, like that. So now we have connected the positive side to our resistor. Our resistor connects to the anode of our LED. I'm going to change the color of our wire to a nice red so it matches. Now we're going to connect the negative, the ground of our LED to the negative rail on our breadboard. So I'm going to choose another wire here and connect right from here and all the way down to the negative and you can see I'm going to change my color to black because we want a black color from our LED to go right to our black color on our channel. The next step is to connect this up to our board. So if we go and we look at our board, we want to connect the ground to the negative of our um, breadboard. So I'm going to draw a line to go from the ground to the ground channel. And again, I'm going to change the color of that to black. And then we want to connect the power. Now the power is the 5 volts. And normally we would just connect the power directly to the 5 volts. That is not going to give us any control whatsoever. That is just going to turn the LED on. We won't be able to turn it on or off at all. So for now, I'm just going to connect it. There's no code involved here whatsoever. So I'm going to connect the 5 volt to the positive side, like that. And I change the color to red. And now we got red from the 5 volt to red channel, and then red channel up to the resistor, the resistor to the anode of the LED, and then this electricity follows through the anode and into the cathode, and then we complete the circuit with the negative channel 
being connected to the ground of the Arduino board. So let's turn this on and start a simulation. And look, our LED lit up. Notice our code from before with this LED is blinking. Hmm. I wonder if we could connect the power instead of going directly to the 5 volt, we could connect it to this blinking LED and get our white light to blink. Well, that's pretty simple. Instead of connecting to the 5 volt directly, we can connect to the channel 13 on our board, or our digital pin 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this connection right here, and I'm going to delete it. And look, the light stops going and blinking. And now, notice my simulation also started, I'm going to go from my negative up to pin number 13. Now this time, not my negative, excuse me, my positive channel. This time I'm going to leave the color a green color because we're not connecting directly to the power source. We're identifying this as connected to some other power source. So now when I turn on and start my simulation, look at that. We can see that the white light is now blinking at the same speed as the little LED on our board because it is also being controlled by channel 13. So that's our first circuit. Let's see what we can else we can do with this circuit in the next video.